The chairman recognizes the gentleman from Texas, Mr. Poe, for five minutes. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Megan Rondini was a student at the University of Alabama. She originally was from Austin, Texas, chose Alabama as the school of her choice. She goes to school there while she's a student. She comes in contact with a former student. His nickname was Sweet Tea. And he takes her to his residence, literally a plantation home. He sexually assaults her. Megan jumps out of the second story window of his residence and goes to the hospital. And that's where her nightmare continued. While she's at the hospital, the people in charge there didn't know how to deal with a sexual assault victim. And the sexual assault exam was botched. She leaves the hospital. She goes to the sheriff's department. They start interviewing her, and they find out that the perpetrator was from an important family in the area, and all of a sudden they backed off, according to her. And they didn't prosecute Sweet Tea. In fact, they told Megan that she needed to have her warnings given to her. She leaves, then goes to the University of Alabama, seeks a counselor. The counselor finds out who the perpetrator was, and the counselor said, I can't help you. This is a conflict of interest. Uh, I know this person. And the Al University of Alabama didn't provide her another counselor. She goes into depression. She leaves the University of Alabama. She transfers to SMU in Dallas, Texas. And shortly after she transferred to SMU, Megan Rondini took her own life. You see, Mr. Speaker, she got the death penalty for being a victim of crime. Perpetrator, in her mind, alleged perpetrator, nothing ever happened to him. So there are a lot of problems and issues that came up during the way she was not treated at the hospital, at the sheriff's department, and by the university. There was, uh, at the hospital, there was not a sexual assault forensic examiner or a sexual assault forensic nurse there to take care of her. Who are these people? These are wonderful people who are trained to deal with sexual assault victims. The hospital didn't have, have one of those for her. And it turns out there are many hospitals in the country that don't have these individuals to help sexual assault victims that are trained to deal with them and deal with them exclusively. So I have talked and met with Megan's parents, Cindy and Mike, uh, who still live in Austin. And we've talked and, and met with a lot of members of Congress on what can we do about this? And we have filed uh, House Resolution 7292. It's a bipartisan resolution. Issues re regarding victims of crime uh, are bipartisan. Uh, the Megan Rondini and Leah Griffin Sexual Assault Victims Protection Act and provides for a task force and a multitude of other things so we can get this problem solved and have hospitals get it together so we treat sexual assault victims the way they should be. And it creates a task force. And I'm not going to go into all the details, but it's great legislation. It's bipartisan legislation. It's uh, sp co-sponsored by my friend on the other side, uh, Congresswoman Jaya Paul, and we have many other members on both sides working on this issue. And to bring it to the House floor, bring it under uh, a suspension or a unanimous consent to get this legislation passed. And that's my understanding as of high noon today, this legislation is not going to come to the floor of this Congress. It's my hope and desire that it comes next year when I'm not here, but other people take up the mantle to protect people like Megan Rondini and Leah Griffin. Mr. Speaker, there are a lot of lobbyists in Washington, D.C. I understand there are 5,000 lobbying groups. That's 10 for every member of Congress up here advocating on all kinds of things. Victims of crime do not have high-dollar lobbyists. We are their voice. We are their only voice, Mr. Speaker. And we ought to start acting like it and bring legislation to the floor on a bipartisan basis and, and not find excuses not to do it because we're it. People like Megan Rondini are protected by the same Constitution that protects 
defendants of crime. And it's important that we help those people and their families make sure that they don't continue to be victims of crime after the crime is committed. And the system should not continue to make them victims of crime, whether it's the hospital, whether it's the sheriff's department, or it's the university. I do want to say, Mr. Speaker, the University of Alabama has made some changes. Texas A&M has made some changes due to the, the 12th woman group that's lobbying on the same thing. And I hope that Congress will see this legislation and pass it because it's the right thing to do, even if we have to wait till next year. And that's just the way it is, Mr. Speaker.